Hi everyone, welcome to another video of Water Drops. In this one, we're going to look at dry weather flow allocation using SQL in InfoWorks ICM. So is this for uh, really engineers and utilities looking to replicate some of the same workflows that they might be currently used to uh, in some of our mature products like InfoSwim and InfoSewer, in particular I'm thinking about the dry weather flow allocator. Also, I, I, InfoWorks ICM users looking for tips and tricks just to strengthen their SQL scripting skills and, and maybe find a little more resources on uh, what we can do with that. And then also engineers and utilities looking for smarter ways of being able to apply dry weather flow data in a much more automated way than manually entering that information. Uh, so first off, we're going to review some of the common methods for dry weather flow allocation. Some of those common methods can include using land use data, so essentially base flows coming from either the residential areas or uh, commercial areas, different dry weather flow base flows there. And then also being able to use SQL queries to apply dry weather flow from polygon intersection. The idea there, if you have sewer sheds and all the meters that are within a uh, sewer shed, being able to apply that to a certain node. And then also closest meter approach. So if you did have water meter data and you applied some kind of factor to account for things like irrigation, uh, we'd be able to do that and then associate that uh, in, that base flow, uh, sum it all up and add it into one single uh, area. So first up, I wanted to show how to use land use data and sewer shed uh, areas to be able to allocate dry weather flow into uh, different subcatchments. And the way we're able to do that in InfoWorks ICM, we have some background layers here for those sewer sheds as well as the land use build out. Uh, if I hit OK here, go up to the model win menu bar and then into geometry, I can do a polygons generation via intersection. Um, so with these uh, sewer shed layers that I have in here, um, I know that the name of my sewer shed is going to be the same as what I want my subcatchment and then subsequently what uh, node I want it to go into. So I'll go ahead and just add that. I'm going to switch over into my uh, land use and into the user text to uh, put in my model's uh, land use data. So that's what that model PLU uh, is for. And then just to differentiate for my purposes, we've got the uh, user number one uh, for uh, whether it's an existing, um, this is number is just one or zero, just if it, it's an existing or a build out. So once we do that, we can hit intersect. So with that process, I've created individual polygons with unique land use as well as the sewer shed area that they're attributed to. Um, I do know that in this model, uh, you can see that my model is pretty consolidated into one kind of centralized area here, but I've got a lot of uh, polygons up here in the north um, that I don't necessarily need. I can use the SQL query to be able to clear out all those um, different intersected polygons that I don't really need. Uh, so you can see here at the top, I am interacting with the polygon objects within uh, this network. Um, first step here is just to select, clear the selection, uh, just as kind of a good habit type of thing, and then we're going to select all of the polygons in here. Um, then attributing a, a list um, uh, of all the nodes. So if you remember that user text one that we put into the polygons is either the node name or the subcatchment name. Both are the same thing. Um, and what we're going to do is uh, select those distinct node IDs into um, that list where uh, then matching up the user text ID, uh, that, again, that node ID into individual, uh, matching it up with those individual uh, node IDs and making sure that that's a part of that list and deselecting that um, and also deselecting anything that doesn't have anything in user text 2. If you remember what user text 2 was, that was the uh, land use, so we don't want that to be blank. Um, if we deselect those um, ones that um, have a value that's in our nodes table in that user text one and then don't have and then actually have something populated in user text two, um, we're deselecting all of those and then deleting the selected. So it's going to delete everything that's outside of there. So if we just drag this on. Now deleted all of those uh, things I don't need, all those polygons outside of my network area um, that I don't have any kind of interaction with. Since I have them all selected already, I am going to go up here to Selection, right click on the Geoplan, go to Selection, and then Selection Operations to be able to change the line and polygon type. 
changing the polygons, I'm going to change them into subcatchments. So it's going to cleanly switch our, all of our data over. Close out of that dialog. And now we have a whole series of subcatchments in here. If we open up some of the properties on here, we can see that we don't have a node ID. We also don't have um, additional flow in here, which is what we'll ultimately use for our, our flow. We do have a default value for the population. Um, normally in InfoWorks ICM, you would have the population multiplied against the per capita flow per day multiplied against the diurnal factor. Um, if we don't want to go with that approach, and that's atypical, I'd say, with a land use approach, um, you might just want to use this additional foul flow where you'll just have that additional file flow is the base flow and then that's going to get multiplied against the diurnal factor. Uh, so because of that we want to scroll over here to the right, look for that population uh, value and then go to set current uh, value for all these cells and just uh, put a zero in there so that um, that population isn't being taken into account there. Switching back to our geo plan and uh, some of these uh, SQL queries we have over here. Uh, this is the next step in being able to populate that uh, flow. So first off, setting the set system type to sanitary just to get things consistent. And then we're going to set that additional file flow uh, according to the area and then basically a flow per uh, uh, flow per, per uh, unit area. Um, and depending on that user text to that land use ID that we put in there, we can modify the uh, amount that it's being multiplied against. Um, we can then also set use these SQL queries to set the node ID of the subcatchment. Um, again, up here at the top, we are looking at interacting with the subcatchment layer. Um, so when we're setting all these fields, it's all uh, attributed to the subcatchment. Um, uh, finally, here at the bottom, we can set the node ID equal to the user text one, uh, which again, if you remember that user text one of our subcatchments and polygons that we imported and intersected um, are the names of the nodes that it's going towards. So closing that out, um, I am going to drag this over as well. And we can see in here that we've got arrows now pointing into the different nodes. Uh, you can see the outline still of the sewer sheds and uh, that for um, for all these different sewer sheds being able to uh, have um, kind of all the arrows within uh, that area uh, attributed to that uh, node in there. You can also go through, uh, go back to our subcatchments and pull up the properties and we can now see that that additional file flow has been updated with that new value. Um, if we go back into the SQL queries, we can also use these to get a nice summary of everything. So the sum of the area that's going into uh, each one of the, uh, from the subcatchments, the average additional flow uh, from the subcatchments, as well as the total um, and some of the land use descriptions that go on with that. So dragging that over, uh, we get a table of all the different land uses with the different uh, number of, um, I guess, mini subcatchments that we have along with the area the unit flow per area and then the total uh, flow going into that area. So for this part of uh, assigning meter data based on uh, what sewer catchment it's located on, I wanted to start in our GitHub just to uh, give you an idea of where I uh, was able to kind of find some of this information and use some of these SQL queries that are already built to help kind of inform what I want to do. Um, so if we could just go into InfoWorks ICM and then SQL and InfoWorks ICM. I was scrolling through just looking at the descriptions and I found one that seemed a lot cl very close to what I wanted it to do. And that's to sum the spatial values of the GIS points in the underneath uh, subcatchment layer. Uh, the neat thing about this one too is that it does have a snapshot file associated with it. So you're able to uh, download the snapshot file along with the SQL query and run through in the points, of course, for the meters and run through this um, exercise yourself. So it's not just these SQL queries that are in here. Uh, please keep in mind too that uh, within Info Asset Manager, it's the same database and there are a bunch of SQL queries in here as well. Maybe a little less applicable, but still could be worth looking through just to get some ideas how to best accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. So now you're going back to the model. I have imported that snapshot file into uh, GeoPlan uh, network and uh, over here on the right side here I have that SQL uh, query all spelled out just to see how uh, I could use that in order to inform. It's a very similar 
uh, type of action. So I figured it'd be uh, very, very useful for this. Uh, you can see here, I've already got the uh, shape file for those points uh, that you can download in that zip file um, already there for you. If I double click on the uh, point two, I can also pull up the attributes so I can look up what's in the different uh, uh, fields of the uh, point shape file that I have in here uh, along with some other information. Uh, for this case I'm going to use this value as my um, piece to sum together in order to get the uh, additional file flow in the subcatchments similar to how we populated things for the land use in the previous example. And taking a look at the GIS or the SQL query that I put together to sum these GIS values um, again, very similar, uh, just to walk through this uh, spatial none, just kind of like deselecting everything and then going into uh, creating this um, list of sums. And then uh, for the spatial, being able to have the uh, spatial contains that GIS um, and then referencing the name of that GIS uh, layer that we have in there. Here's where we start to differentiate a little bit. Um, here, I want to sum everything. So I left out this where clause. Um, and then I just want to uh, sum up the value um, and kind of routinely go through, sum up all the values that are um, uh, nearby it. Um, again, deselecting everything. And then the select object ID or OID, uh, that's going to pull up the object ID along with the uh, sum for each one of those uh, different subcatchments. So the underlying subcatchments, since we are using that as the object type up there. Um, I'm going to list those out and then with the set additional file flow, uh, setting that equal to the sum of the uh, values of the points that are within each one of those. Um, I also added this in uh, just as a data integrity thing or just if you never knew about it, uh, but within the uh, SQL syntax for InfoWorks ICM, any one of the fields that are in here, you can simply uh, add an underscore flag uh, to each one of those and create a um, flag with uh, that would be associated with each one of those. So uh, clicking off of that and dragging it over, as I mentioned, uh, that table with the object ID of each one of the subcatchments along with that sum um, for each one of the values of all the meters that are within that subcatchment have now been uh, displayed over here. I can pull up the subcatchment table and look at one of the properties and sure enough the additional file flow has now been updated with that new value and then the uh, SQL and the, and the flag has been updated with the SQL flag. So for this final example, I wanted to take a look at being able to allocate the dry weather flow from meter data based on the proximity it has to different nodes in the network. Um, I've uh, gone ahead and taken a copy of the network that we had before and deleted all of the, all of the subcatchments because typically in these situations, we don't necessarily have sewer sheds delineated um, or don't necessarily need them to be physically represented. Uh, but the first step in all of this is going to be able to take this uh, point data that we have that we've uh, seen before, go through the open data import center to be able to get that geo plan into uh, some general points. I'm going to make the general point uh, ID name just to be the ID and then all we really need is the value. So I'm just going to make that the value uh, importing all those points. I now have those uh, represented in my uh, geo plan. Uh, since we don't have any subcatchments in here right now, we do need to create some. A uh, pretty easy way to do that and have it all associated with the node would be to come up here and go to export in the open data export center. I'm going to export out the nodes. I'm just going to select a file that I've already uh, done this with and just replace it. Uh, if I hit auto map, it makes it easy just to export everything from there. Um, I'm really just going to use the node ID, so um, I don't really care if there's a bunch of other stuff associated with that. So exporting that, I export all three nodes I have in this tiny little network, and then go back up here into the uh, Open Data Import Center. With this, I can look down for the subcatchment to import subcatchment and switch this to CSV and then go look for that CSV that I just saved. If I hit open there, uh, I can populate the subcatchment ID with the node ID. I can say that I want the uh, system to drain to a node and populate that node ID with the um, 
with that node that it's training to. So if I import that, I've imported those three now as subcatchments, and I can pull up that information in my properties uh, menu as well. So again, population zero, uh, good to go, uh, since we are going to use that additional foul flow for our uh, purposes. So the first step in all of this is to associate the uh, meter data with the nearest node. Um, so pretty simple setup here where I've got um, the uh, general points is the object that I'm interacting with and then I want to say uh, the nearest node and so what I have here is a simple explanation. The simple explanation is just to set that user text one uh, uh, that I um, is blank currently right now with the spatially the closest node ID and so I can just drag that over now and now in my general points if I pull up uh, that information and scroll over to the right I've got um, my my two are just the two that are closest to all of them are just in one and two um, I've got that field now populated so now we're going to sum all the values in those general points, the uh, the base flows for each one that is in uh, near proximity to that. Huge shout out to uh, Nathan Gertz who helped me with not just this one, but also the first example we saw there. But uh, going through and looking at what we have set up here, we are interacting with the node as the object type. Uh, we create a list of uh, all the different nodes and uh, separate those into distinct node IDs through that node list. We're also going to set up a couple of other uh, lists for uh, just making sure we can uh, go through a loop and then letting the uh, dry weather flow. This is similar to what we saw earlier with the um, dollar sign sum uh, before, but um, setting that equal to zero to start with and then setting user number one of the all nodes just to clear out that value in case there was anything in there. So for the loop, we're going to basically say that while, um, while that um, value, um, uh, while the number of nodes that we've gone through already is less than the total number of nodes in the list, we're going to keep going through this series. And first up, we're going to uh, sum that user number one uh, into the dry weather flow or the sum of all those base flows from the general points table uh, where that user text number one uh, is the same has the same uh, node list uh, from there we're going to update in the nodes the uh, user number one the dry weather flow um, again where the node id is equal to the same node list uh, finally adding to that uh, kind of keeper of the loop, um, adding one to it. So as we go through all the nodes in the list, um, that length will eventually be uh, greater than uh, the number that are in the node list and finally in the, the while clause. Um, finally, we're going to set the subcatchment additional flow to that user number one of the nodes that we've updated with that loop. So looking back over here, I'm just going to drag that over onto our geo plan and then open up our subcatchment window to view uh, what we've done to our information. And um, we're assured we have uh, 28 now gallons per minute uh, in our additional foul flow. Uh, and then if we look at the properties here, 200 gallons per minute into our, our second subcatchment there. So in summary, uh, in general, we're trying to uh, make the transition from some of our mature products uh, into Inforx ICM a lot easier, and hopefully this is uh, one of the ways that we can do that by um, giving you the uh, tools and capabilities to be able to replicate some of the current workflows you might have there into Inforx ICM with some of our uh, scripting capabilities to uh, do kinds of like customized workflows for different organizations.